Camp counselors of Reddit, what is the most NSFW thing you've seen happen at camp? Story 1. I was a camp counselor a few years ago at a camp for foster kids. One week, a counselor caught a camper, male 15, in bed with another camper, female 14. The room they were in was tiny, and the four other girls in the bunks were awake and cheering them on. They were loud enough to wake the counselor who pulled the male camper out of bed. The guy had a Ziploc bag around his dong, held in place by a rubber band. I was both impressed at their dedication trying to do it safely and appalled at how terribly they went about it. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2 I was witness to one of the most hardcore and insane things that has ever happened at a Christian camp. In the summer of 2001, I was a counselor slash work crew member at a Christian camp in Northern California. I was there for a month, and we had four different groups that showed up for one week each. The first three groups were completely normal and without incident. The last week, we had a group of about 300 at-risk kids from underprivileged areas up and down the Pacific coast, from San Diego to Seattle. These were mostly kids that were growing up on some mean streets and rarely got out into nature, so it was awesome for them to be out in nature and get the full camper experience. The first day went fine, and it was mostly just everyone settling in. After the second day, however, things started to get a little bit tense between some of the different groups of kids from different areas. On the third day, we had a hoedown with all the campers on the basketball court as a dance floor. This is where tensions came to a head, and stuff got intense very fast. Unknown to our ultimately naive camp leaders, there were multiple Crip and Blood gang members from different cities throughout the groups of campers. The hoedown ended up becoming a battlefield. I'll never forget watching a six-foot-plus teenager leap off the top of some bleachers like Roddy Piper off a turnbuckle and smash an unsuspecting camper's face in. It erupted into a full-blown brawl that lasted the better part of an hour. I honestly considered it a miracle that nobody was killed. I've seen a few street fights in my day, but this one made me never want to see another one. As a result, a few campers went to the hospital, a few got arrested, and the rest went back to their bunks. Later that evening, each counselor was assigned a bunkhouse to bring a tray of brownies and a pitcher of juice to. We did this on day three for all the camp groups. Basically, we were supposed to befriend them with juice and brownies and tell them how great our Christian organization is and how Jesus has positively affected us. Upon entering the bunkhouse, I see a timid white counselor with his head in his hands, in an almost fetal position sitting at the edge of a bunk. As I look around, I notice all of the campers are rummaging around in their bags and grabbing their gang colors and bandanas. I wasn't really picking up on what was happening until I heard the unmistakable sound of a slide being pulled back on a handgun. As I turn around, I see two kids tucking in pistols into their waistbands. These kids were suiting up for a full-blown gang war in the middle of a Christian camp. I don't remember what I said exactly, but I must have said something because their group leader guy looked up from his hands with watery eyes and just mouthed, I don't know what to do. I sat down the pitcher of juice and plate of brownies on the ground and booked it to the main building in the camp. I told the camp leaders what was going on and for them to call 911 immediately. Luckily, the cops got there relatively fast, given it was fairly close to a small town. They ended up arresting over a dozen campers and even a few of their group's counselors. To this day, I don't know what the counselors were arrested for. They cancelled the rest of the camp and sent all the kids home three days early. That was the last summer camp I was a counselor at. Story 3 I worked as a junior counselor at a summer camp quite some years back that had kids aged 6 to 15. One camper, let's call him Billy, was 10, and he was really homesick. Billy was very shy and a little awkward, and you could sometimes tell that something wasn't 100% right with him. Lights Out was at 8pm, but they could use a lantern to read slash tell ghost stories and other stuff as long as they didn't disturb their bunkmates. Now, a few things happened while Billy was at camp. First thing, Billy was being made fun of by this other camper. We'll call him Jake. Jake was the typical, my dad can beat up your dad, brat. One night, Jake comes up to the counselor cabin, crying. He says he woke up and someone was peeing on him and peeing in his mouth. He didn't know who, though, because he had pee in his eyes and couldn't see. After asking around, nobody saw anything, so we documented it, reported it to the parent, and the mom came to get him. One down. Next incident was a few nights later. Another kid, we'll call him Chad, stole Billy's dinner and ripped up one of his Pokemon cards. I'm not sure if it was Pokemon, but it was a card game of some kind. That night, we hear yells coming from Billy's cabin. We run over and see Chad with a giant cut on his head and a broken vase. Apparently, the vase had fallen off the shelf while Chad was sleeping and hit him. Billy had a mischievous grin the entire time. Chad needed eight stitches and apparently had some skull fractures. Not sure how accurate the skull fracture part was. The other counselors were the ones who said it. Two down. 
The last and final thing that happened was about a week after the vase incident. Another kid, we'll call him Derek, was having a rough time at camp. He was also homesick and missed his parents. I figured Derek and Billy would get along great. I was wrong. Long story short, Billy was found in one of the closets shoving a broomstick handle into Derek's butt while Derek cried and touched Billy's dong. They had both their parents called and were kicked out of the camp. I come to find out 15 years later that Billy's father was manipulating and abusing him almost every night, and that's just how he thought you made friends. To this day, I know the tale of Billy lives on as the craziest thing that's ever happened at that camp. Edit. Uh, a few things to add. I asked around, and the camp is still open, and the story of Billy's butt broom still lives on. For some reason, people are confused about why there was a vase in their room. It was more like a tall clay pot. The campers did arts and crafts. According to an old friend I know in the local PD, Derek died a few years ago. He's unsure if it was drug-related or an accident. He's trying to find more info. I really hope he got therapy, though. Billy's dad apparently was arrested for incest, assault, and abuse when he got his 14-year-old daughter pregnant. Not sure if he's still in jail or where. I don't know where Billy is, and no, that's not his real name. Story 4. This actually happened earlier today. I work at a summer day camp at a local park with kids in the kindergarten age group. Interesting slash gross things happen almost every day with kids that age, but today's events took the cake. Basically, this six-year-old boy found a dead bird in the grass and decided it would be fun to pick it up and smear the blood and guts all over his hands and arms. After doing that, he started chasing around other campers to try and share his bird entrails with them. I had the pleasure of catching the gore-covered kid, ripping the bird's ravaged carcass out of his hands, and spending half an hour in the bathroom getting him and myself cleaned up. When I asked him why the heck he picked up a dead animal, he said he thought it was something awesome to do. Story 5. One year, I was working a regular camp, and had a lead counselor run over to another counselor and I to say, look in the first stall of the boys' bathroom. We left our kids with our age group's female counselors and ran. By the time we made it, a crowd of counselors had formed around the toilet. Contained inside was by far the mightiest, largest turd I have ever seen in my life. Easily a diameter of three inches and long enough to be far down the toilet while also free willying out of the surface of the water. No campers were told about this. A few days later, a camper asked me if we were running to the bathroom the other day because of a giant piece of crap, and claimed to be the conjurer of it. I was mortified. Story 6. Nobody will ever believe this. My parents never did. For some reason, it didn't make national news, but here we go. I went to a summer holiday camp once. Not religious or any other organization hosting it, just a cheap way for parents to send their kids off for a couple weeks in summer. Well, on the eight-ish hour bus trip there, I already noticed that some kids seemed odd, but I didn't think it would be an ongoing theme. I was wrong. It turned out that many institutions housing kids displaying behavioral problems, to use a nice term, were sending kids there too. It started out with the older kids, 15-ish, regularly bullying and hurting younger kids. I got to be a victim on day one. Yay. We were housed in little wooden huts with eight or ten kids each. Day two, it started to smell very bad. After telling the camp staff and them searching the hut, it turned out to be a kid, he will appear again, pooping and pissing in his suitcase. Camp staff threw the suitcase away, told us to take it easy on him and not tell anyone. So, of course we told the whole camp. That probably pushed the kid completely off the edge. He started running around naked and usually with a heart on, telling weird lies like, we don't have knives at home because I peeled off all the wallpaper with knives, so my dad made us knives out of Coke cans. At that point, we all knew he didn't have a family already. He lived in some sort of loony bin for kids. And he also started getting violent. At some point later, he attacked me, naked, with a hard on I crushed him. Other kids said I kicked him until he didn't move anymore. But I don't remember kicking him after he went to the ground. But that day, even the biggest kids didn't try to mess with me anymore, so I probably snapped and actually did kick him. Until now, you may think that it doesn't sound too crazy to believe. Let's change that. Right next to the campgrounds, there was a traveling circus at the time. Clowns, animals, etc. All the usual circus stuff. But this circus was odd. Some kids claimed that one of the clowns would hunt camp kids, only wearing his clown makeup. That I can't confirm. Never saw that happen, and most likely the kid made it up. But one day, I returned from the beach, 200 meters away or so, and on the way back, a kid coming to the beach tells me, 
you can't go back to camp. There's apes going wild and police everywhere. Yeah, right. Heard too many BS stories already while being there. Well, I reach camp and it looks almost completely empty. A couple of police are to be seen. I almost reach my hut, then a policeman sees me and screams to run in the hut quick. I'm like, WTF? I run into the hut and kids in there say apes broke out of the circus and are running amok in camp too. We all stick to the single window and in fact, at some point, a chimpanzee wielding a glass coke bottle runs runs past and smashes a window. Not ours though, and he was chased by police. We're all super excited. One kid in the hut claims he saw a giant gorilla earlier. Nobody believes him. Until we hear shots and can see the chimpanzee running around. It wasn't a full grown gorilla, but still like 120 kilo, I, I guess. They shot him after trapping him in the camp's gym. Nobody else was hurt, just damage to the buildings. There was so much chaos. We actually got to see the body of the gorilla in a giant pool of blood. It was like two to three square meters on the floor. Police and camp staff couldn't control hundreds of kids at the same time. Story was that animals were badly mistreated in the circus and snapped during one of the shows, running away straight into camp and probably just getting more crazy with all the screaming and running kids. You surely realized by now, I wasn't a counselor, but screw it, you already read it and it really did happen. I think it's relevant enough. Story 7. There were these two kids, which we named Poo Poo Picasso and Gandhi. Both were in my friend's cabin, which was year two campers, so the kids were just out of third grade. So I guess they were around eight or nine years old. Anyway, Poo Poo Picasso, as you could guess, would smear his crap. He would defecate inside of his trunk and left it there for a day before my friend noticed a smell. He wrote on the walls of the bathroom with his feces. It was just disgusting. Now, Gandhi didn't want to be at a summer camp, despite it being a total blast. He would just complain and ask to call home, which he wasn't allowed to do unless it was a serious situation. Fine, we deal with this sometimes, but what we weren't expecting was for him to go on a hunger strike. That's right, a hunger strike. He would just refuse to eat for several meals. He would break and eat a ton of snacks during our afternoon refreshment period when we thought we wouldn't notice. What made Gandhi really special is that he learned to vomit on command. To do so, he would drink insane amounts of water. Then, when we would ask him to do something he didn't want to do, he would just vomit everywhere. It was nasty, but at the same time, typing it out kind of makes me giggle. Eventually, the two kids got over it, I think. Story 8 I work in a building that hosts a camp for people with autism and other mental handicaps. A guy was really attached to his counselor, a girl. He really liked her and asked her out almost every hour of the week. She finally said, no, I have a boyfriend or something along those lines. He got really mad, stripped down, and freaked out out. He urinated and defecated all over the floor. When other counselors were trying to calm him down, he ran over to a fire extinguisher box and smashed his head into the glass. He had big chunks of glass in his face and forehead bleeding everywhere. We were told as building managers to stay clear of the floor he was on. They would clean it all up. It was odd. Another story. When he left the building, we also found a sort of poop shrine. Like he would crap in the closet and then mold underwear to it. He must have used like a whole can of Febreze on the thing a day because we never knew about it. Couldn't smell anything. Story 9. As a new camp counselor, you should do everything you possibly can to ensure that you get a group of older kids. Ages 8 to 12, preferably. Any younger, and you're going to have some interesting experiences. There was one kid I remember named Sam when I had bathroom duty at the swimming pool. Sam was five years old and absolutely enamored with his dong. In fact, Sam couldn't seem to use the bathroom without showing everyone his miniature little friend. Usually, when all the campers were changing for the pool, Sam would make it a point to run around and show off his little buddy. Every time he changed for the pool, the bathroom erupted in shouts and screams of, Sam, get away from me! Now, being an adult male camp counselor dealing with this scenario is a very difficult situation. Any wrong move could be perceived as inappropriate, and additionally, no one likes dealing with naked people. Have you ever been in a fight with a naked person? Getting into an authority war with a nude five-year-old that isn't your own kid is much, much worse. The desire to not touch them is increased tenfold. Unless, of course, you have some sort of psychological issues. I yelled inside the bathroom, Sam, put your trunks on! Any number of times, but his hearing was as selective as my old runaway Dalmatians. Sam, you're going to be in timeout from swimming if you don't change and get out here now. Nothing. Sam, don't make me come in there. 
That time, he seemed to hear me, and this kid, I kid you not, turns to me and says, you can't do that. And for the most part, he's right. I can't do that. And what's more is that I didn't want to do that anyway. All I have to threaten him with is time out. And if I did go in there, there wouldn't be much that I could do except for threaten him with time out in closer proximity. Luckily for me, all the kids finished changing despite being harassed by Sam and his miniature companion and Sam. Oh, poor, poor Sam, was left with no one to show his dong to, so he changed and went swimming after a very, very long time out. Story 10. In high school, I was a counselor at a community outdoor camp, where a lot of the kids who attended were there because their parents needed to put them somewhere. These kids were typically 8 to 12 years old. We would have to take the kids on hikes around the property where we'd see a bunch of uninteresting animals, hang out by a pond or creek, and then head back to the main center, where some animal expert would bring in a snake or owl to give the children some excitement each day. One week, we got these two little dudes who hated everything about the camp from the start, but they hated each other more than Samuel Jackson hates snakes on a plane. They were constantly finding creative ways to piss each other off throughout the week. On the last day of camp, we had just finished a hike and stopped by a creek where everyone could rest and look for frogs or throw mud into the woods. Behind me, I hear one of the two cuss at the other one, after which I slowly turned around to see what the other one would do. The accused had picked up a half cinder block sized rock and was bringing it over his head so he could smash the back of the accuser's head in with it. Fortunately, I was close enough to where I could grab the rock before it came down on the other kid's unsuspecting head. Story 11. Ex-counselor here. Our camp has a thing where one night all the people who had been there for three years go out and do crazy stuff in the fields by the camp. Needless to say, I saw a lot of breasts, but other than that and smoking weed, nothing really big happened. Apparently, in years before, some of the abandoned cabins were used during that night for rowdy banging parties with lots of alcohol involved. This was back in like the 1990s, where I guess the upper staff were a lot more lenient. I worked at the camp in 2010, so I guess I missed the really interesting stuff. It was interesting to bring the topic up to my boss, who worked at the camp as a counselor at that time, and see him get all red-faced and say he doesn't know what I'm talking about. Story 12. So, at the beginning of summer camp, many children are shy, anxious, nervous, etc. Others just flat out don't want to be there. One of those people happens to be the Phantom Crapper. So, first week of camp, one of the counselors that I work with was doing a bathroom check, just for overall cleanliness of the site. They found that someone was crap painting on the bathroom stalls. Disgusting, but not unheard of. Later that week, it happens again. Only this time, there's a clear message. Painted in bold crap on the bathroom wall was, I want freedom. He didn't really know how to spell that well, but you get the idea. The situation develops further the following week. A field trip. We're at a rather large playground that has a tall slide structure. When I say tall, this thing is bigger than a house. At the top of it, there's an area where people wait to go in on these giant slides. As one counselor goes up to watch his children go down said slides, he finds a glorious turd at the top of the slide. Now, the phantom crapper would not have gotten away with taking a crap at the top of the slide. Way too much traffic up there. My theory is that they took the crap elsewhere in the park and then walked it up to be found. Since then, there's been more cave paintings on the bathroom walls, but no further turds. Story 13. I worked at an eight-week sleepaway camp in the Northeast and was working in a bunk of seven and eight-year-olds. As the summer went along, we lost a few counselors due to the fact that our campers were the devil's spawn and only six or seven years old. So us remaining counselors were spread thin. And one day in the span of 10 minutes, when we didn't have a counselor in the bunk, I'm walking back and all the kids are running out of the bunk screaming about how one of the campers, male six, put his dong in another kid's mouth male seven. This is an all-boys camp, too. And when the camper was later asked about why the other kid put his dong in his mouth, the kid's response was, because they dared me to. After long lashings from the director and owners, and what I assumed were some long talks with the kid's parents, it was all swept under the rug and forgotten. Story 14. I work at a day camp for kids aged 4 to 13. I was with a group of about 10 kids, all 8 or 9 years old. One day before pool time, one kid walked into the bathroom and got completely naked. Then he started crying because he had lost his bathing suit. I went in trying to defuse the situation and he bolted. He ran around at top speed screaming and crying, flailing his arms all over the place. Do you know how illegal it looks for a 16-year-old boy to be chasing a nude 8-year-old? Well, I eventually caught the kid and brought him back to the bathroom. When I asked him what his bathing suit looked like, he pulled a bathing suit out and said, It looks like this. Oh! This mf -er had his bathing suit six feet from him the entire time. Story 15. I was a counselor for a teen group. 
13 to 16 year old boys and girls. We took the group of about almost 25 on a camping trip to Oklahoma. Since most of the kids came from pretty well-to-do families and the YMCA where we worked at had plenty of money, we were staying in pretty swanky cabins. One large living room downstairs and two large loft-style rooms upstairs. Of course, we separated the girls on one side, boys to the other, and counselors in between. One of the female counselors noticed some dust on the floor of the shower one night and looked up to see a hole in the ceiling. The boys had taken the coat hooks out of the wall and used them to drain drill holes down into the shower so they could watch the girls. They had even gone so far as to work out shifts and an elaborate signal system when counselors were nearby. They were able to keep it up for two nights before anyone noticed. Story 16. Well, I'm a camp counselor right now, actually up at the camp while I'm writing this, and after three years working here, I have seen some things I never thought I would have to see. Usually, the offenders seem to be the youngins. Put seven grade two to four boys in a cabin together and something is bound to happen eventually. The first of two tales which I will tell occurred in a cabin of grade three boys during the time when they are supposed to fall asleep for the night. I was on what is called night watch and went around checking the cabins to make sure that everyone is relaxed and quiet and sleeping. Usually, this is a pretty lax job, so imagine my surprise when I walk in and see these kids having what they called a, uh, a, uh, naked disco, complete with lights, music, and, of course, dancing. I'm sure you can imagine that we shut that down pretty quick. The second thing also happened while I was on night watch, and I went into the cabin of the same age group, grade 3 boys, and the cabin was pretty rowdy. You could hear something that was going on from a few cabins over, and so my night watch partner and I go and knock on the door. No answer. We knock again. Still no answer. So we open the door and see they're having a sort of jousting tournament. They had a line separating the cabin, which I guess the two people would line up on either side of, and I don't know how it was supposed to to work, but it was a very sophisticated little setup they had going on. They had a tournament bracket set up and everything, so again, we shut that down fast. I know you came here probably expecting steamy stories about how turned on counselors and campers get with each other, but that just doesn't happen where I work, and I hope you enjoyed the adventures of naked third graders instead.